coffee. Good morning. Good morning. We are back and we are going to be closing out the lesson on forgiveness. This is the lesson number four. Good morning. My name is Gerald. I'm Millicent. And this is my wonderful wife, Millicent. And so this is a pumpkin spice ooh, coffee. This is really good. Huh. And so, um, again, we're going to be talking to you about forgiveness. And we're going to close this out. I think you have um, been given several tools over the last four, over the last three Saturdays. And now we can actually talk about um, what's going to be our next step. So, this lesson is entitled, If Forgiveness Doesn't Come Easy, This is Number Four. So, uh, I want to make a declaration to my wife. I want to thank you for your support this week. It's been a long week, and I have been gone quite a bit, but I appreciate you supporting me. I enjoyed going to the basketball game with you yesterday. I know we were both tired, but we enjoyed it. Um, I just decree and declare uh, blessings over your life. I know you're getting ready to get back into school, and I know that's going to be tough for you, but I know you're up for the challenge, and you want to do it. So I'll be there to support you, okay? All right. Well... I appreciate your support. Uh, I thank you for always supporting me and encouraging me to go on and, and to do better. Okay. So, um, we want you to always find a declaration to make to each other because you need to hold each other accountable for those declarations. These are not some empty promises or empty words that we say to each other. We actually make a, a collective effort to do this during the week right. that we uphold the... Um, the declarations that we made. Now, this week, I did four out of five. I was trying to make sure I contacted my wife, <laughs> and I did not do every single day. I four out of five. Yeah. It's important. So, um, we just want you to be encouraged. We want you to focus on letting things go that you should let go for your mental well-being and also for your physical health um we're going to start out with um, a prayer and then we'll get uh into the lesson so heavenly father i want to thank you for waking us up this morning and start us on a new day father we thank you that your mercies are continued father god even when we're not our very best and even when we do sometimes things that does not please you you still father god have allowed us to get up and try again so on this day, Father, I ask you to forgive us of any sin, any unrighteousness, or any wrongdoing. And we make um, this day another day to be the very best that we can be, to allow your word to govern our way out, to govern the way we uh, treat each other, and allow your word just to manifest itself in our heart. Let it be a, a lifestyle change and also a milestone change. Lord, we just thank you for a blessed day. We thank you for a great interaction with people that are, are, are wanting to release and forgive. And we pray, Father God, that this will be life-changing for them as it is for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Amen. we're going to start off with, we we'll read this, and we should have started that a while back, so <laughs> we might need to change that. So, let me just do this. I'm going to put it in about, what, 25? Yeah. All right. We'll start our timer now. Okay. So um, our prayer for today, um, again, we're using, and I know it's backwards, but a prayer book, a book of prayers for couples by Stormy O'Martian. So that's the book that, that we've been using. Um, we strongly encourage uh, for you all to get that book, it's, it's a great book. The first part is uh, prayers for the wife. And the second part is a prayers for husbands. And the last part, which is what we're doing our lessons off of, is for couples. Mm -hmm. okay? Exactly. <clears throat> so, we're going to read this. And then this is a prayer. And it's uh, the last one that we have for this series. It says, Lord... Lift up my husband or wife, excuse me, I'm sorry. Lord, I lift up my husband or wife to you in prayer and ask you to help him or her let go of any unforgiveness that she or he harbors. 
help him or her to forgive me of anything I have done or not done that was displeasing to him or her. All right. I pray that you, the God of patience and comfort, will grant to my husband or wife the ability to be like-minded toward me so that we together may glorify you with a single-minded voice of unity. That's Romans 15, 5, and 6. We're going to definitely look at that. Um, give him or her a heart of mercy toward me so that he or she can truly let go of anything I have said or done that has hurt him or her. So the the prayer is basically saying that, you know, God, I want you to re shape, reconfigure my heart to let go of anything or anybody that has hurt me. Uh, good morning, Latasha. Good morning. And so we want to make sure that when we talk about forgiveness and letting go of things, that you give these things to God and do not allow those things to come back. And I know that for some people that can be difficult, but it's something that we're going to work towards doing. So, I know we talked about last week um, looking at how a ship can be in a harbor and it actually has opportunities to go out into the sea. And forgiveness is the same way. When we allow for the ship to stay in the harbor, that's the same thing as allowing in the harbor we want the ship to go out to the sea and we want that forget we want that unforgiveness to go away so that we can continue to focus on what god has for us right. so i want to read uh romans 15 5 uh, romans excuse me romans 15 5 and 6 once i get my my bible here together Romans 15, 5, and 6. Okay, so this is what the Word of God says. It says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 7, it says, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. So, I want you to understand what God is wanting you to do. You and your husband, you men and your wife, you're supposed to be encouraged to have the same attitude, a mind toward each other in Christ. That with one mind and one voice, you can be able to glorify God. When are you going to get to that one mind and that one voice? What steps are you going to take to build unity in your marriage? And the best thing that you can do and one of the most important things you can do is pray together because that's an, that's just... It's, it's important for the survival. First and the thing thriving. in the morning. First thing in the morning. Survival and thriving of your marriage. You get together. You pray together. You ask God to cover your wife's men from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. That no weapon formed against your wife shall prosper. That you speak the blessings of God over your wife. That they are yea and amen. That even though your wife may be going into a place of of um, difficulty that she thrives and no matter what kind of boss your wife may have you pray that God blesses your wife with workplace favor with the boss no matter who she has to face I pray that prayer every morning Father I ask you to bless my wife with workplace favor with our boss because everybody's not the same everybody don't think the same and everybody don't have the same um belief system but when you're doing things right by God people should, they should see that 
they just they should see that your heart, no matter how you are, has been and continually is being transformed into the likeness of Christ. It's difficult to be on the same mind and the same attitude, but you do that through praying. Pray together in the morning. Pray before you eat your food. Pray before you back out of the driveway. And these are some tips. And it's just me. There's nothing written in a book. These are some tips for prayer. You driving down the street, and maybe you're going fast, and maybe you see somebody on the side of the road. You're not able to stop and actually help them. So this is what you can do. If you see somebody that's struggling, but you know, you're really not in that position to help them, send that prayer out. Send that prayer out and say, Lord, I ask you to bless them that they're one, they're safe, that they get the help that they need. I'm not able to provide that help, but I want to make sure that they get that help. Start praying for stuff like that. When you pass by an accident, you don't know if the person is alive or dead. You don't know what the situation is. Lord, I ask you to restore life to whoever that is that may be in that accident. Lord, I pray that you bring healing, supernatural healing to a very devastating situation. You can do that because your words have power. So when we talk about the unity of purpose and being like-minded, you need to pray together. And you need to set up an atmosphere of praying together. And so the reason why I'm saying pray together is just start with small things. Pray up your food. Don't assume that even though you bought it from a store that it is just that good. I mean, pray up your food. You don't want to get some kind of contamination. And, you know, you talked about um, having the same attitude of mind that also uh, covers praying for your spouse when they're at work because we don't know what each other has to face during the day. No. Or if we do know, like, you know, we have things coming up at work mm -hmm. and you tell me about it, you know, as to be your helpmate, it's up to me to pray over you and, and cover you in the blood of Jesus for those things that they may be accomplished, you know, uh, without any problems, that yep. God had offensive protection around you, you know, and keep you safe and that those things be accomplished according to his will. Okay. So the thing is, um, think about, you know, when you're at work, you know you're going to be facing stuff. It is vitally important that you pray uh, about that. Um, you want to grow as a person. And everybody's not going to be at the same level of forgiveness that, that you may be at. But what I will say is this. When God has his hands on something and you release it to him, then you allow him to take the driver's street. You know, who's going to drive? You going to drive? Who's going to drive? So my thing is, I want to share another scripture with you. Because when we get down toward the finishing of this lesson, and I know it's not going to be a whole lot of... Of, of other things that, you know, you want to tag into it, we're going to have like what is called like a forgiveness party. And I'm going to roll out about one, two, three, four, five, six scriptures. And I just want you to start saying amen or I let these scriptures resonate to you. So I'm going to read to you, uh, this is Philippians 2 and uh, 1 and 2. It says, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. I love that. It says, then make my joy complete. So Lord, complete my joy by me being like-minded with you and then my wife. With my yeah. wife and then my husband. Right. See, I think that we get this stuff twisted. You know, you are uh, a son and a daughter of Christ. And yes... My wife is my helpmate. But if I'm going to be like-minded, I got to first be like-minded with him, with the master, and then with my wife. That's right. I think that we have a, a, a different perspective on that. My relationship is with my wife. Of course it is. My relationship is with my husband. Of course it is. But it should be with God first. That's and the way it's I supposed to be. I think that's the, the part that, that some people miss, you know, is that your spouse should be second in your life. 
after God. I think sometimes we miss that. And that's a foundational issue. And for a marriage to really flourish, you know, everybody needs to know <clears throat> where their place is. And I'm not saying that like some kind of authoritarian. authoritarian. I'm saying that for the fact is, if God is not first and other things become first, then those things become to God. And that That's doesn't probably. mean that and then he's not he's not in his place. So if he's not in his place, then I'm not in my place, and then I'm displaced, my home is displaced, my finances are displaced, my thoughts are displaced, then you have a displaced, dysfunctional life that doesn't bring out the very best that it can be in God. And I'm gonna go back to what Tori said a couple of weeks ago. What did he call call it? The the passatory call it the ripple effect. Yeah. Very, very oh yes, yes, yes. So we was talking with our friends, uh, Pastor Tori, uh, and he said that when you do those type of things and they're out of order, it's just like throwing a rock in a pond. Mm -hmm. Once that rock hit the water, you see the ripple effect. And you see that ripple just go all the way across. Right. And so that can be a twofold thing. You know, when you throw a sin into the sea of forget for the sea of forgiveness and you let it go, then you're allowing God to take that. And he's done with it. You're supposed to be done with it and let it go. But where we are right now, we can definitely, we can definitely, we can definitely make a change in how we do things. Right. So we got to get on this like-minded thing. So again, Philippians 2, 1 and 2. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love. Being one in spirit and of one mind. You don't do it by just saying it to them. We have to practice. Right. People don't like that word. Practice. <laughs> I guess you're going to cook a meal on the first time and it's going to be good. You're going to burn that meal up. It's not going to be good. <laughs> but you're going to cook that meal again. Right. And it's going to taste a little bit better. Hopefully it tastes a lot better. But the thing is, you have to practice. When you do your hair, oh, I'm not going to go to the hair place this time. I'm going to try it. Oh, it didn't come out well. Oh, God. You want to practice. So why do we think that scripture, scriptural work and work with God is something where it's just supposed to supernaturally change something and you don't practice? Right. It's not going to happen. You have to practice. So, I want to, it's basically, I'm going to pose them out. I, it's pretty much one question. And I want you to think about this. And you need to really be honed in. Why is it important to release the person that hurt or disappointed you? You need to think about where you want to be with the Lord and you want to think about how you can speak a blessing over the life of the person that you probably can't stand. I hope you don't hate them, but even if it's to that point, Lord, if hatred, disappointment, anger, malice, and all these things are in my heart, how am I going to move forward in you and I still got these things toward them? Right. Lord, I ask you to take this from me, and it is going to take me some time because my mind has to let it go. But I'm releasing it to you so that you can do that perfect work in me. And that's what I'm asking you. For me, it is important to release the person that hurt you so that you can heal. It is just that simple. If you want to be healed, and you have to let go. And if you want to go forward in life and not always be looking in the rearview mirror at what somebody did, at what somebody said, right. they didn't come to me this way, they didn't handle it this way, no. Let it go. And let God do what he needs to do with that person so that he can do what he's been trying to do for you for years, months, or however long it's, it's taken for you to get to that point. So, 
this is what I want to do. I want to have a little fun because I don't see a whole lot of interaction out there. I want to see some people uh, giving out some comments about if you agree with some of these things. So, if you have your Bible with you, I want you to run to Ephesians 4 and 32. I want you to run to Ephesians 4 and 32, and I'm going to roll out this word. I want you to pay attention. It says, be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. That's the word of God. That's not me. That's the word of God. Be kind to one another and forgive just as God has forgiven you. I didn't make that up. That's actually in the word. You'll find it there. I just need you to go to it. Now I want you to run from Ephesians 4 and 32. And I want you to run to Colossians 3 and 13. Colossians 3 and 13. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get there. I'm going to give you 8 seconds to get there. I'm going to give you, okay, you should be there. All right, so <laughs> it says in Colossians 3 and 13, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any one of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's a commandment. Let it go. Right. Quit holding on to it. You can get a you can you can clear your, you can clear up some acne by forgiving. Because you won't be frowning up all the time. You won't be looking like that. You can actually give up, you can give up some acne if you forgive. That's not the word of God. That's just me messing around. Alright. So again, that was Colossians yep. 3 and 13. <laughs> Bear with each other and forgive one another if any one of you has a grievance against someone. That means if somebody ticked you off and you were upset, it says forgive as the Lord forgave you. All right, so let's take a run over to Matthew 6. Let's take a run, a sprint over to Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. This is not my word, this is the word of God. Matthew again, 6, 14 and 15. Here we go. It says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Oh, but here come the twist. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Right. So, you need to let it go. We need to make that a, a, a word. League. L-I-G. League. Let it go. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a shirt. Oh. It's going to have L-I-G on it with three three with exclamation points. Yeah. They're going to say, League, what is that? Let it go. All right. You can <laughs> let it go. Now, if you will take and run, run with me to 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John 1 and 9. I'm getting there right now. First John chapter 1 and verse number 9. You know this one. But it is a twist. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yes. I'm going to say it again. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What is that right there? Hmm? Oh, oh y'all need to read this. Look, in verse number 10, it says, If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. That one hurt. That's the A. Hey, I guarantee you. Don't play around. That's that's not to be played with. So, if you claim that you ain't never hurt nobody, it's everybody else's fault, you don't have no ownership for your own behavior and your own stuff, uh, God say, well, then you're making him to be a liar. And God said in his word, and I don't know what scripture it is, but he said, I am a God that cannot lie. But so, see, it really wasn't my fault. If they hadn't have done that, then I wouldn't have responded like this. That's not what you're supposed to do. 
Hmm. You're supposed to be in control of your own actions. There you go. But don't get me wrong. You will right. mess up. And I will mess up, and I have done so. Ooh. But I can guarantee you one thing. You know, when you when you allow for God to deal with you in this way, it's, it's going to make you better. Right. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Ooh. That means he's just a straight up liar. And and God don't he don't look on the face of that. All right, put your track shoes on. Let's run to uh, Mark eleven and verse number twenty five. Mark eleven, verse number twenty five. She's typing faster than I can find. Mark eleven, <laughs> verse number twenty five yeah. says, "And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them." So that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. So when you go to the front of that church and you are wanting God to do something supernatural in your life, and you see the person in your mind while you're at the altar, and you know you should forgive them, and you refuse to do it, but you believe in God for supernatural healing, you believe in God for a job, you believe in God for a promotion, you believe in God for something to break through, and you see that person in the back of your mind, and you know you need to go find them and forgive them. Just go do it. But I got a question for you. Do you realize how many people don't even do that at home what? with their own spouse? Oh, yeah. Mm, hold it against them. Treat them bad or treat her bad. And, in, and the bad thing about it is they may be unaware. Right. They may be unaware. Because you have not brought that to their attention. So we are at about two minutes. We have been doing a sprint. Because we are sprinting to each scripture. This is the last one. Hebrews 9 and 22. This is going to put the capstone on everything we've been discussing. Hebrews 9 and 22. I hope this is correct. Because if it's not, we're going to be in trouble. Alright. It says, In fact, the law requires... That nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So without letting it go and giving it to the Father, you don't get no forgiveness. And you don't allow for the person to receive forgiveness. Because that's what God is saying. In verse number 22, I'll read it again. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. You got to let it go. Leg. I got to get a shirt for that. <laughs> you got to let it go. So we just want you to be encouraged. I hope that you take these scriptures and I hope that you take them and run with them. This is a sprint. You can pray over these scriptures over yourself each and every day. You can visualize whoever it is. Then put their name down. Lift their name up in prayer. So that God can do something supernatural in them. We ain't asking you to have some kind of uh, party and say that you're having a forgiveness party for them. But what I am saying is, these are people. And these are God's people just like you are God's chosen people. So why don't you pray a blessing over them so that God can do something supernatural in their life? That's what we want. We want them to be blessed. We want them to be set free. We want to be set free too. So you can't do that if you hold it on to pain. You know, you need to let that go. So, we're all at the end of our message. Oh, we got a challenge. Yeah, challenge of Ooh. the week. <clears throat> Cut that. Hit that. Okay. okay. So, my wife is going to read the challenge of the week. And because then we're... we do give homework and we expect you again to, what's the P word? Pra you have to practice. All these scriptures are not just for you to read. Practice. That's yeah. what's going to yeah. make you better. Practice. When you did your makeup for the first time, did it come out good? A hot mess. Did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> A hot mess. The, the one we started at the beginning. Pray this prayer for seven straight days, expecting God to bring deliverance and peace to your marriage or relationships. The homework is pray this prayer for seven straight days, expecting God to bring deliverance and peace to your marriage or relationships. Do I need to read this prayer Read the again? prayer one more time. It says, Lord, 
I lift up my husband or wife to you in prayer and ask you to help him or her let go of any unforgiveness that he or she harbors. Help him or her to forgive me of anything I have done or not done that was displeasing to him or her. I pray that you, the God of patience and comfort, will grant to my husband or wife the ability to be like-minded toward me, that we together may glorify you with a single-minded voice of unity. Romans 15, 5, and 6, and I'm saying that with some, with some mm. give him or her a heart of mercy toward me so that he or she can truly let go of anything I have said or done Amen. that has hurt him or her. Amen. I think we have done the work that we could do. We have given you four lessons. This is unscripted. This is unrehearsed. This is live and in living color with our pumpkin spice coffee. So all we want you to do is just practice, practice, practice. And if you continue to do that, God is going to do something supernatural for you. Um, continue to be blessed. Know that we love you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to continue to, you know... Um, just continue to decree and declare God's blessings over you. So I'm going to close out with a prayer with my wife after she finished typing. And then we're going to close it out. Heavenly Father, we lift up all the people that may be hurting from unforgiveness, that may be hurting from somebody that has done something against them. Father God, no matter what it is, life is too short. We are here one day, gone the next. I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, even in my own home, if there's any unforgiveness in my home, I pray, Father God, that you break up that fallow ground. I pray, Father God, for the people all across America, all across this world that may be suffering, that may be going through something, and they just haven't found a way to let it go. Let this be a breaking point in their life where they allow you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to take that hurt, that pain, that suffering, and release it into the sea of forgetfulness to never return again. I thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your, your awesome power, my, my awesome and mighty brother. And Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We will see you next Saturday and discuss marriage matters because your marriage matters. Have a great breakfast. <laughs>